How many times have you read about God intervening in someone's life in the Bible and wish to see him intervene in your life the same way? Does God even intervene in our lives, or was that just during Bible times? If he did show up in your life, what would it look like? Would you even recognize it? In the Bible, God shows up big, like in parting the Red Sea and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's preservation in the fiery furnace. But he also shows up in less flashy ways, like when Peter pulled money out of a fish to pay taxes, or when Elisha threw a stick in the water and an iron axe head floated to the top of the river so it could be retrieved. God will intervene in miraculous ways, like healings that doctors can't explain, or he'll intervene by using another person, like someone jumping into the water to save someone from drowning. So in this video, I would like to share a few of the many times that God has intervened in my life, whether supernaturally or through other people. Let's start at the beginning. November 11th, 1977, a giant 10-pound, 14-ounce behemoth of a baby was born. Birth is an amazing miracle by itself, but there were other factors. In 1973, the Supreme Court ruled that abortion is legal, so with my mom being really young and single, she could have easily had an abortion and moved on with her life. Another option she could have chosen was to put me up for adoption. Do not get me wrong, I am for adoption, but in my case, I could have lived with someone else and had a completely different upbringing. Thankfully, my mom chose life and chose to raise me. It was my mom who first brought the idea to me several years later of going to church. And through that invitation, I eventually learned about Jesus and accepted him as my savior. So even from the beginning, God was intervening in my life. Obviously, this is not something I remember because at the time I had not turned a year old yet. But in 1978, I had a severe ear infection. The doctor gave me penicillin and my body decided to go into anaphylactic shock. I puffed up and broke out in rashes all over my body. My eyes and throat were almost swollen shut, and I had difficulty breathing. I know it had to be extremely stressful for my mom and my grandmother to stand there helpless, but by God's grace, I did survive, and I've had to avoid penicillin ever since. Now, we move into the early 80s, and my mom decided that I needed to take swimming lessons. One particular day, after these lessons were over with, we were allowed to still play in the pool until our parents came in to get us. So I was in the middle of the shallow end, bobbing up and down when I moved too far towards the deep end and went under. Needless to say, I panicked and splashed around until the instructor jumped in and pulled me to the side of the pool. If he would not have been paying attention, I definitely would not be here today. The second time I almost drowned was in the late 80s when we took a family vacation to New Orleans. While playing in the swimming pool at the hotel, a decision was made that I would ride on my older stepsister's shoulders while she walked towards the deep end. When she hit between five and six feet deep, we both went under. She, of course, could swim and was fine, but I still couldn't. So I again began to panic and desperately splashed around when I began to sink. My stepdad had to dive into the pool to rescue me. If you're wondering, yes, I had no common sense when I was growing up, but I am forever grateful to the man that saved me and later became my best man at my wedding. The more I think back on this incident in the mid-80s, it's truly amazing that I was not hurt. It was a rainy Saturday morning, and I was riding in the car with my grandmother on the way to the store. For whatever reason, I was sitting on my knees in the front seat without a seatbelt on. We had stopped in the road to turn left to get to the store, when all of a sudden, we were rear-ended by a truck whose brakes locked up and smashed into us. How I was not thrown through the windshield was truly a miracle. Now you might be thinking that the truck was probably not going that fast. Sadly, the accident was severe enough that it resulted in my grandmother having to get surgery on her back. Though the surgery helped, she was never really the same after that wreck. On a rainy day in the summer of 2000, while driving back home on the same roads I have traveled a hundred times before, I ended up hydroplaning and drove off into the median. As I was spinning out of control, mud and grass were flying all around. I knew I was going to be a goner if the car keeps going into oncoming traffic. Thankfully, the car came to a stop. I was able to drive to the opposite side of the interstate and got off on the next exit. After stopping to get gas and to catch my breath, I got back on the road again. Ten minutes later, I spun out again, and this time, there was no muddy median to slow me down. If I would have spun the same direction as before, I would have slammed into a concrete barrier. But I spun the opposite direction and stopped on the outside lane facing backwards. If I would not have stopped where I did, I would have ended up crashing into some trees. Even to this day, when I drive in the rain, or wet roads, I tense up. 
Now, this one might be a little silly to some of you, but it was important to me. In April of 2012, my wife and I went to work like we always did. When I got home 10 hours later, the house was quiet for the first time in 13 years. Something was terribly wrong. My dog Greta, that I had had since March of 99, was missing. Being a schnauzer, she was a very smart dog, but had only lived in the house and played in the fenced-in yard her whole life. That being said, she wasn't wearing a collar with our information on it, and she had no idea how to behave out on her own, especially with us living next to a busy street. So I panicked, and I went searching around the neighborhood calling her name. With each passing minute, my heart continued to sink further and further into my stomach. I walked the block twice, hoping she would come running to me. Then a mailman drove up to me and asked if I was looking for a dog got excited, and I said yes. He said a gray dog was walking behind him, but before he was about to cross the street, he was worried that she would still follow him and possibly get hit by a car. So he asked the woman whom he had just delivered mail to if she could watch the dog, and maybe the owner would come for her later. He told me which house to go to, and I went there as fast as I could. Then I heard what I thought was her whimpering, and I followed the sound to the house, and I met a woman. She had Greta, and I was so relieved. Apparently, the sliding glass door at our house wasn't shut all the way when my wife went to work, and Greta went out into the fenced-in backyard, squeezed through a small opening in the gate, and followed the mailman around the neighborhood. Now, some of you may ask, isn't it just a dog? She wasn't just any dog. She was a long-time member of the family. She could have been taken by someone or hit by a car, but God worked out this amazing miracle for us, even though it was just a dog. In September 2012, my wife left early in the morning to drive to Baton Rouge, Louisiana for training classes for work. As I was getting ready for work, I got a phone call from her. I could tell she was upset. Her voice was not the same like it usually was. She had been involved in a wreck. Going 70 miles an hour down the interstate, she suddenly lost control of the car, slammed into the guardrail on the right side of the interstate, just under an overpass, and then bounced from there into the median and hit another guardrail. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the airbags never deployed from either collision. An 18-wheeler was going in the opposite direction and saw what had happened. It stopped, crossed the interstate, helped her get out of the car, and called for help. According to the police officer, she was five feet away from missing the second guardrail and could have rammed into oncoming traffic. I drove there as fast as I could, and when I arrived, she was standing there talking to the officer and the paramedic. They saw no reason to bring her to the hospital. The only injury she had was a little cut on her pinky finger. This was an absolute miracle that she survived with only a scratch. On the other hand, her favorite car was definitely totaled. February 28, 2018, I received a call from my wife, but when I answered the phone, it wasn't her. It was her boss in the hospital. She said that Jeanette had fallen and hit her head and was in the emergency room. I immediately left work and rushed to the hospital. When I got there, she was a little out of it, but her boss told me that she had just given blood and fainted and was found on the floor by another worker. She had a concussion but doesn't remember anything. We really didn't know the extent of what happened until we saw the security footage. The video shows her waiting for the elevator to come, and when it opens, she stops right before getting in. The doors close, she stumbles across to the other side, slamming her head into the wall and falling down. She lays there for a few seconds, wiggling her foot, then struggles back up to her feet. She walks toward the elevator doors as it was opening and stops again and falls, this time flat on her back, slamming her head into the ground. Thankfully, a lady was just coming out of the elevator and saw her fall and was able to call for help. She suffered with dizziness and headaches for a long time after the incident. Even her memory has not been the same, although she can still remember every time I have ever made a mistake before or after this scary injury. With her head and possible neck injuries, so many things could have resulted in a much worse outcome. I am just so thankful that it wasn't too serious and she was able to recover. To be clear, God has intervened in my life and in my family's life many, many more times than these. But let me share one more. I want to share a time God intervened in our lives, but not in the way we prayed for. After getting married, we really wanted to start our own family and tried for years to get pregnant. But we later found out we could not get pregnant because of me. Despite our plans and unanswered prayers, God still had an amazing plan for us. So in October 2018, we began fostering. We had a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns, but to make a very long story short, God gave us children. Our love for them is immense, even if they are not our biological children. This experience reminds me of what God said in the book of Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. 
Many times we are waiting for God to move in our lives in a specific and certain way, but He has bigger plans for us that may not fit the exact details of our prayers. Sometimes God intervenes in our lives in the form of supernatural miracles, through others, and even in unexpected ways. And what about you? Can you remember back to a time when God intervened in your life during a crazy situation? If you cannot think of anything, perhaps there was something amazing that happened, and at the time you chalked it up to chance or luck, when it was actually God showing up and showing off in your life. If you didn't thank Him then, thank Him now, and share that amazing story with someone. It is easy to doubt and become overwhelmed with the troubles of this life, but God loves us so much, He still intervenes in all of our lives in His perfect timing. I pray you found a little hope and encouragement from this video. But until next time, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.